guys, it's Jane from the Presentation Art Center and I am here to walk you through today a painting of this little wintry gnome. I have to thank a friend of mine, Carolyn, for planting the seed. This is the finished product, Carolyn, so there you go. We are very excited about starting this YouTube page. We have just started an Instagram page. We are having a creative art challenge once a week, every week on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, this week it is a winter beverage so it can be anything it can be a poem a song a painting a drawing of anything you want multimedia sculpture that expresses your creative talent we want to share that with everybody on facebook and instagram because we all need an outlet right now this is a crazy time and maybe we will improve our own skills somebody will inspire us to try something new i personally am trying digital art which scares me to death but I'm trying it. So you're never too old. Get out there, try something new. Let's get on with this painting. We have this little gnome, as I always say, just like Bob Ross, my hero, this is your world. If you want him to be in green or hot pink stripes or polka dots, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna walk you through the painting just as it is, but if you wanna alter anything, this is your painting. This is your world, baby. You do your thing, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so to get our palette ready, um, I have my Stay Wet palette here, which I love. It's just a little sponge and a little paper on top. You get this a little bit wet. This will store your paints forever. It is fabulous if you're working on a long project where you're gonna work on it a few hours today, come back tomorrow or three days from now. For this project, we really don't need it because we're gonna finish this in such a short period of time. But I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway because I love it. So I'm going to start out with some uh, raw umber. And we don't need tons of this. That should be plenty. Well, we'll give a little bit more. And then, of course, white because you always need plenty of white. And I usually stick it more towards the middle because I mix it with so many things. We're also going to use our uh, alizarin crimson and we're going to direct mix it onto the canvas, meaning I'm not going to mix these two together here. I'm going to kind of mix them together as we paint, but that's fairly quick in the process here that we're going to need these. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to our palette. I like these two together in this because um, this is very fire truck red. And I kind of wanted to soften it a little bit, kind of give it more of a burgundy-ish tone. Oh, we do want some yellow oxide. There's going to be kind of a break here where you're going to give it maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending upon how wet you've got your canvas. So I'm not going to get all the paints out right now. But that's all we're going to really do right now. I am going to show you uh, the brushes that we're going to use today. We're going to use a what I call a large flat. That's about an inch wide. It's just nice uh, bristles, soft. And we need a small flat. I like these white nylon bristles. This is one of my favorites. This fella right here, this is Filbert. He's a size 12. He is a Blick uh, Scholastic Wonder White Filbert. Uh, this is a number eight. This is a natural bristle brush. So you'll see how it's really quite rough, but it's not, it, it's a rough, it's gonna give a rough texture. And we're gonna use that for the gnome's beard. I call this a medium size round. This is a pointed tip round. This is a size eight. Again, this is like in a scholastic set that I get, but he's a very soft bristled brush. And then we have this guy here. This is an angular brush, as you can see by the angle. And we're going to use him very little, but he comes in really handy. So that's it for right now. We are going to get to our canvas here, okay? So let's get started. First thing you want to do, I have a 16 by 20 canvas here. You can go smaller if you'd like. It's completely personal choice. Always, always, always get your brushes wet first. Just dip them, just gently in the water, boom. No big deal, tap them off a little bit. This helps the paint spread better. And it also preserves your brushes a little bit, doesn't stain them so badly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flat, wide brush, we're gonna go into our raw umber. 
and that's going to give us this background color here. You can go as light or as dark as you want, but I'm just going to go flat. I paint the sides. You don't have to do that. That's completely a personal choice. That's just the way I like it. Because I know I am never going to frame it. So we're just going to come at different directions. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just laying it out, laying it out. No big deal. All different directions. I kind of like that modeled background. You know, not the big solid color. This is just very chill, you know. You don't have to get your knickers in a bunch about this. This is just a background, and I know sometimes it seems really scary. You think, oh my lord, that background looks awful. But it's the background. And if you want to loosen your, loosen your stroke a little bit, step back on that. Back up, just like you do a bat. Just like a baseball bat. I pick my canvas up a lot, so that way if it's hanging up somewhere, you don't have like funky edges. You can always pick the edges like a different color. You can paint them black, you can paint them white, you can do whatever you want. I just like to leave it the basic color of the background. I don't want too many funky things going on here at the angle where I just painted the edges, so just kind of swipe them back around. Don't overbrush. I can't stress that enough because it's really easy to do. If you overbrush, it's just like painting a room, a house, a wall. You start pulling the paint back off if you just keep working the paint. If you feel like you've made a mistake and want to go over it, just remember, all you have to do is wait for this to dry. It doesn't take very long. Now you will notice on my sample painting here, I did this painting a couple of times. And that's because I used raw umber from two different manufacturers, and the color was so different. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you there's a slight difference there between brands, between whether it's uh, academic paint or professional paint, the same color can look quite different. At this point, once I'm kind of satisfied with this, see how I'm starting to almost pull it back up? That's because that's at the wrong stage. It's not wet enough, it's not dry enough. It's at the wrong stage. Don't brush on that. So now what I'm gonna do, this is still wet. So I'm just gonna go to the edge here. Don't dip in the middle. You just booger up all your white then. I'm gonna go to the edge here and I'm gonna start putting in some white. And that's just gonna automatically start mixing. And that's kind of what we wanted to do. And I'm going to dip again from the corner because I don't need a lot. I leave it kind of sporadic on the edges there. I don't want it to be too perfect, but if you want it to be, you know, almost perfectly oval, then you can just blend it a little bit better. But I like it kind of off a little bit. I'm going to fill that hole there. With white. You see I did pretty good. I have no no raw umber in my white. If you get it just right it works out pretty slick. Keep in mind, most of this is going to be covered by our little Mr. Gnome. So we just want something kind of soft in the background. But again, lots of different angles. Just whoosh, 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 whoosh. And I'm way back on my brush, and I'm not, I'm not brushing hard. That's going to help you blend a little bit smoother too. I'm holding my brush back here instead of, you know, like you're going to write a novel. Yeah. I'm scooching back on my brush and that just automatically gives you kind of a, a looser vibe. 
a looser stroke. All right. I'll leave it right about there. Now, what having this lighter center also helps with is since he is in red, this helps give us a nice bright red. Now, if you don't want a nice bright red, I'm going to clean off my brush really nicely. And to clean your brush, you just want to take your brush. You don't want to smash it, but you want to act like you're cleaning the bottom of the bucket. And just go back and forth. And then get it up in the rag. And I just gently bend it. And if I'm looking at my rag, and this is not a good example, but if I look at my rag and there's no paint color coming out of it, we're pretty good to go. So now we're going to take our trusty Filbert. I love this guy. He does so many wonderful things. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to draw this out. Now don't get freaked out. If nothing else, go small like this and then build out. And then we're going to draw this. Boom. We're going to draw his little belly. So this is where we're going to use our red mix. And again, what's the first thing we do? Bam! We dip it in water. We dip that brush in water. Dab the water off. And then I'm going to just sort of... I say I wasn't going to mix, but I'm going to partially mix. So see how it's just real loose? It's just a real loose mix. We're just kind of, eh, dab a little here, dab a little there. That's how we're mixing. And you can see, I have loaded that brush. He's got lots of goodies on him. And then with the tip of the brush, we're not going to smash it down. And again, back up on your brush a little bit so you're not right on top of it because that, you don't get as smooth a stroke that way. And I know it's scary to back up on the brush like this, but just give it a try. So, okay, Ooh, we loose, get loosey-goosey, shake everything about, do the hokey pokey. And I'm gonna start with just this. And I want it to be slightly exaggerated like this. It kind of gives it more of a, an animated feel. So I'm gonna go like this, and like this, and like this. And then again, I'm just going to dip into that. And again, don't smash your brush into the paint. If you'll notice, I'm doing this with it. So I'm semi-mixing, but I'm not, I'm not mucking up my bristles, because I don't want to do that. Now I'm going to come over here, just like this. And we're going to go just about even with the other side. It doesn't have to be even. It can be lower. It can be higher. This is not brain surgery, just relax. You see how I went up? We want to keep that up. We may bring it down a little bit, but again, this gives that a nice flow. Now you'll notice, see how I'm emptying out my brush? Because I've got all that paint in there. So I can just empty out my brush and fill in that hat. Because I've got tons of paint. I'm going to come back here, and I've got a big old glob again. Big glob. See that? That's why this layer usually takes a little bit to dry. Because we're using lots of paint. Now I want to make this little loop-de-loo, this little hook. You can make that as long or as short or as big as you want. I'm just going to take it right about to there. Now my paint's still really wet right here, so I can do this, but in just a minute or two, you will not want to add any more paint. You gotta let this dry. Or you're gonna hate it, as my husband would say. You're gonna hate that. I'm coming down to a pretty good point down here. 
but now I'm starting to pick up paint. See how it's starting to pick up paint? Quit. Quit, Jane. Now you will notice that we have a beard. We have his, I call it his gift bag, his little mitt holding it. So I'm going to come down right about, we want to try and allow for this. It's okay, you can paint over this red, it's not that big a deal, so don't get too worked up about it. I'm going to load my brush up again, but I want to keep that point, keep that point on there. I mean, it's a thick point, but it's a point. I'm not smashing. I'm just picking it up this way. And then again, you're not touching the canvas heavily. You're not smashing your brush into it. Just lightly, just boop. And then I'm going to come to this side. You can see a little bit more of that side. And I'm going to, I kind of try and keep it with this, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. We have a little body. We have a body, you guys. Look at that. You can tell I just picked up a lot of the, just the, the cadmium red. And that's okay. Picked up a little bit of that. You clean up your edge best you can. We're going to come back and touch it up, so don't worry about it if your edge is not perfect. We're going to add a little shadow there later. Little shadows and highlights. And with that same brush that filled, this, we're just going to add this little bit of snow down here. So I'm actually painting, when I get when I load this brush up with white, I'm painting like this. Let's see if you can see that. I'm painting like this, not like this. I'm painting this way. So we have little horizontal strikes on the tip of the brush. I'm just gonna grab some white. I don't need a lot of white for this. Very little. That's it. That should do it. And it's okay if you hit that red a little bit. I have a little bit of red. The red would reflect in the snow that's around him, so that's all right. And I just take, and very lightly, just barely. Remember, we've still got black shoes that are coming. We're gonna add in later. That's it. Right now we're going to add the star. So we're going to mix white. We're going to take a little white with our small, small to medium round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of that. We're going to mix those together. Normally you do not mix. This is naughty. You do not mix your paints with your brush, but I'm doing it very gently. You should use a palette knife. That's really the best way to mix paints. It's easier on your brushes. Now for the star, I'm just gonna make, I like to have it kind of curved because I feel like there's a nice curvy feeling to all of this. It feels more, I don't know, mythical maybe? I don't know exactly. So I'm just gonna start here very gently. Do the top. And then I like to kind of bring them around like that. And bring his little tail down here. And then we got one more. Of course, we will touch him up with another layer of color, but that's it for him right now.
right, since there is so much going on here, we're gonna go ahead and let it dry for a few minutes, depending upon how much paint you have. Now you can always blow dry it if you'd like, uh, but we're gonna let this dry for just a few minutes and then we'll come back and uh, we will continue, okay? Okay, so now that this is dry enough, um, I wanted to show you, I added just a little bit of raw sienna to my palette and Payne's Gray. Now Payne's Gray, if you don't actually have Payne's Gray, you can use just black and white if you'd like. You can mix Payne's Gray yourself with ultramarine blue and a uh, burnt sienna. Go very lightly with the burnt sienna and just keep adding it until you get a nice warm Payne's Gray color. This is just a nice bluey gray. And I thought it looked good in his little beard there. We're going to take a small flat, and again, I got it wet first, so it's just a nice small flat nylon bristle brush. And we're going to take a little bit of white and scoop it over here with our raw sienna. We're just going to make a very light bag. We're going to create this bag right here. Now, if you want, you can use your filbert. I think filbert would be a very nice brush for this but I figured if you're a little more timid, you may want a little more control, and this will do that for you. So we have a nice, small, flat brush. And I'm just gonna make a big bubble here, because he is stock full of goodies in there. That's all your presents for the holiday. So we went full, loaded down. And then, as you can see, I just keep grabbing as I need it. But I'm going to keep, with this color, I'm going to keep grabbing from this side so I don't pollute all of my, don't, bloop, bloop, bloop. Don't do that. It's just a pain. And don't get discouraged by what this looks like because we're putting a very light color over a very dark color. That's okay. We're going to put a, another coat on here. For right now, we just want to cover the best we can. And I kind of alternate a little bit of that burnt sienna color, a little bit of white. And that gives it a little more dimension. But like I said, don't worry about this if this is not coming out like you hoped because this is not the finished product. I like to load up, especially when I'm doing an edge like that, because if you load up, see how, what a nice clean edge that gives you? We're not going to get all worked up about this little layer because that's what acrylic painting is. It is tons of layers, so don't let yourself get worried right off the bat. There we go. Now we're gonna do his nose in this color too, but we're not gonna do his nose yet because that will get a little bit difficult with the red and the, I'm sorry, with the beard. Cause we're gonna put a beard in here. And that's a messy little way to go. I'll show you in just a minute. And then I'm gonna bring that down. And I, you'll see, I just kind of did a it's not a perfect little, because it's a bag, you know? And they get crumbled. It's folded right here. It's all pinched together real tight. So we're just gonna let that go kind of like that. And again, we will worry about that a little bit later as we come and do a second round. So now here's where we're gonna use our Payne's Gray and white. I'm gonna clean out my flat, lay them down. This is where the natural bristle brush comes in. This is fantastic for scumbling. You're scumbling today. Just thought you'd want to know that. So we're going to scumble. I am not, and this is not normal, I am not going to get this wet because I want this to be a fairly dry paint process. So I'm going to dip it in the white like that 
We're going to try and steer clear of this a little bit and the red a little bit because your red might still be a little bit wet. And I'm just going to smear some white in little circles, random little circles. See how I'm just lining right next to it? That's fine. Can you come and give it a little swirl? Pretend there's a nose in here. You want to do this to kind of remind you there's a nose coming in later? Go for it. And we're just going to go up to that bag. Now, I'm going to grab, well, I'm going to finish this first. Hang on. Let's go ahead and just finish it up. You want to cut, go into that red. That's why we wanted to give it time to dry. Because we're going to go into that red and we really want to keep that as clean as possible. Now, I like it kind of random, you know. This is not a perfectly trimmed beard. He's a gnome for crying out loud. He's probably not into all that. Perfect grooming. He's just letting that baby grow. Now that I've got all that white in there, I'm going to come in and take just, I'm just going to dip that white brush. I'm just going to, that's it. And I'm going to dab that off because that's a lot. That's a lot of paint. We will never use all that gray. See, that's a lot. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come over here. Come over here. Just loosely. And so I'm getting it and it's starting to blend out. But what I'm now going to do, because it is a lot, is I'm going to take this against a paper towel and I'm just going to brush it off a bit. And then I'm going to dip that brush back into the white and get more white. Okay. Now we're going to come in here. And if you feel like it's still too much blue, or I'm sorry, gray, <laughs> looks blue. Wipe it off again. Now, I am a big fan of just old dish towels. Bath towels are better than dish towels, to be honest. So I have tons of old bath towels. Wipe it out again. Pick up some white. Maybe kind of, see how I'm kind of just gently tapping? You're not smashing it down. You're just tapping, kind of get that white up in there. And then you're going to drag it just to other little places. And we want some of these darks to stay. We want that nice little swirl that gives us that soft beard look. So we want some of the darks to stay, but not quite what we have going there. So I'm just barely, barely touching the canvas here, guys. Barely touching it. I'm going back to get some white. And see how white that is? That looks nice, doesn't it? You can just keep doing that. Just grab a few on the hairs, just a few little paint on the hairs. That's a lot. Can you see that? And we're going to come back in. Get some nice bright whites. And we're this is not the top of the beard either. You know what I mean? We're, we're going to add more layers. Not tons, but we'll just define this a little better after we get this blended and decide, okay, do we want, because we're going to add some bright whites like that which look really nice compared to the rest of the softer whites and the grays. Now I'm not getting my brush wet. Big reason, big reason there. Because once I get it wet, it's going to start really blending and I don't want those two colors to blend. I don't want the white and the gray to blend. So we're just going to keep cleaning out our brush a little bit, grabbing some white. Go back on your brush again, okay? Back on your brush. Just real loose. Really loose. 
a little bit more white. I dab it off a little. See, I'm just dragging that, that gray kind of all over. I can make it go as long or as big or however you want it to go. I keep my circles fairly small, but you can go big too. Now, yeah, see, look at that. Look at that. That's so nice. Look at that. I'm not going to wipe it out completely, but I'm going to just soften it here and there. But if it's blending too much, let it dry. I'm still playing. I can still do this, but I don't have too much more time and I'm going to have to let that dry completely before I can come in and add another layer. Just be patient. I know, patience is hard. Here we go. And that raw sienna and white mixture that we did for the bag, we're going to do that for the nose also. So, it's kind of dried up like mine has. We're just going to... And again, when I'm mixing the paint with my brush, which is not the best habit to get into, you'll notice I'm not smashing it down like this. I'm patting it side to side, one side to one side. That way you're always keeping this nice sharp edge. See how sharp that, that edge is? That's a very nice sharp edge. And we kind of want to center his nose a little bit under the brim of the hat. Remember, keep your keep your hands out of the beard. So we're just gonna come up there. Now again, I am one to pick up my canvas and move it any way that helps me. So to keep my hand out of that beard, I'm going to come over here because the hat at this point is dry. And I'm just using that filbert. Let him do the work for you. See how round he is? He's got that nice round edge. Bam. That's the way you do that. So we have a nose. Our little man has a nose. Okay, we're also now we're going to add a little burnt umber, which is more of a chocolatey color. The raw umber is uh, got a lot of green tone to it, so we're not uh, going to do the staff with that. We want to do the staff and some details with our burnt umber. Okay, so just a little dab will do you. I know that dates me. And again, I have I now have the medium round, or small round. You can see what size it is there. And we're going to do the detail. We're going to draw in our staff, and then we're going to do detail on our bag and our nose. So this, as you can see, the staff is really kind of, it's behind him. We just want to draw just a little hook. So I'm just going to bring this, I'm going to start here. But right here at his hat. And we're just going to make a curve with our round brush. But remember, it's behind the hat. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to do this with it, get a little detail right there, get a nice finished up right there. And then imagine that line goes through right about here. And this line right about here. So we're going to draw the rest of this paint. I'm saying draw. You know what I mean. I'm going to take my finger, brace my finger here. Turn your canvas, whatever you need to do. We just want to give a little detail to the nose. So just very gently. That's it. That's it. 
I'm going to go back to my small flat because I want to fill this in better. Bit, 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 bit. All right. See how it's getting a nice, nice coat here. And I'm just grabbing a little white and just letting it run right in with that sienna. And just blend it around. Generally you want it darker around the outside edges. The reason being is that that is farther away from you as you make it lighter. That's going to give you the illusion of uh, it's closer, it's fuller. And we want these bad boys pretty full because we have been very good this year. I'm bringing some little lines in here to kind of give an indication of how big and full that bag is. Well, that bag just keeps getting bigger, doesn't it? That's okay. No worries. Just means we got more stuff. More stuff is fun. All right. And don't forget the part that's coming in towards his beard. Like I said before, it comes up. It's very uneven because, you know, that's the opening of a bag, which we will get some detail in here shortly, but keep the strokes going in towards the bulk of the bag here. And we'll just have some light color, some dark color, and then we'll get the details done here in a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to give a little dark stroke in here. Didn't clean my brush or anything. I'm just grabbing that sienna color. I am going to give him a little uh, shadow on his nose just for a little definition, a little detail here. So I'm just mixing that. <laughs> and I just basically mixed the same color. So I'm just going to grab some sienna. There we go. That's all he needs. Then I'm going to take those same colors and I'm going to work on the staff. So I am taking still the flat and I've got it on a fairly mix of the uh, burnt sienna and white. But I'm going to grab just a touch of white. And if you can see that kind of piles up on the brush a little bit. I'm going to take the brush at an angle and just let it barely touch. And that will give us some nice little detail without having to add every little grain of wood there. See how it does that? Now if you feel like you want more white, just grab a little more white, barely touch, at an angle. I'm back on my brush, back on my brush. But it gives me a nice little, kind of a grainy detail. Now as I come around the corner, I gotta use mainly the tip but I want to just barely touch the canvas. Barely. Because I don't want to cover up all that good, nice chocolate brown back there. And here's the thing. If you overdo it here, you just come back in with some more brown. It's no big deal. Touch it a little bit. Which I'm going to grab a little brown with all that on my brush. I'm going to grab my uh, burnt umber 
that nice chocolatey brown color. And I'm just going to touch. We also got a nice new color in there because it's going to mix with those tones underneath it, the sienna and the white. And I think that helps give the wood a more natural look. Sorry if my fat head is in the way. All right. I'm going to take just the edge on the side here. And I'm going to get some of that color in there. I'm going to grab a little bit of that nice chocolatey brown. Drag it here because, you know, a, a glove is going there. So we won't see much of that anyway. There we go. Now with our filbert, we're going to clean out our little flat brush and we're going to give him boots and gloves. And we're going to use fill. We're going to use fill for that. And we're going to use just plain old Mars black. Mars black, ivory black, it doesn't matter. Just some plain old black. And add that to our palette. So we've got our filbert. We damp it, get a little bit wet. And then we're going to dip into our black. Again, we're just side to side. Just tap it around. We'll load it up pretty good. So we're going to put a glove. We're going to use, we're going to put his left glove in first. So that glove is going to, again, go under the hat. And see how I'm just turning the brush? That brush is shaped that way for a reason. Let it do its job. If you're nervous, about using a filbert for this. You can use your round. You can use your flat too if you'd like. Your small flat. But this gives it a nice even stroke. It covers all that color underneath it very quickly, which I like. And then dab, dab, dab. There he is. But he's going to need a thumb. So I like that this will very easily make a thumb. I just Get the paint, load it up pretty good, and bam, he has a thumb. That quick, which I like it. Now the beard should be relatively dry. We are going to give him another glove over here. There we go. That thumb looks kind of small, doesn't it? I guess it's hiding behind the hat. I'm going to stretch it out there a little bit. Okay, and then his, his feet. His feet are just going to come down here. Um, I, again, I'm going to use the filbert. And I'm just going to make a round ball. And then I can still make a fairly straight bottom here. And he has a boot. I try to keep them about the same size, but you know, if it's not perfect, that's okay. Hmm. Add a little something, something right here, because I made him. There we go. All right. Now I'm laying that paint on fairly thick, so it'll cover in one fell swoop. And no, my boots are not perfect, but I'm okay with it. I might make this a little bit bigger. I like that just a tad small. Now you can do this next part with your filbert if you'd like, but I'm going to show you how to do it with the angular because as you can see, we don't have a lot of shading right here. We've got a little bit started up in here because it's still dark from the, from the background, but we want to add a little more definition there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my angular brush. Since we haven't used it yet, it's dry. I'm going to get it wet. Bam, bam. And I'm going to go about 70% red and 30% black. 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to grab some of these, both of these reds, both of those reds. A lot of cat, but we can have both. Okay, and then I'm going to clean off my brush because I'm going to dip it into that black and I want to keep my black nice and clean. Shoot, let's just, let's just get fancy. We're going to take a little bit of this black because black is very strong. Red's a very strong color, but black is very strong. And we're going to mix that to get a nice dark red. That's what we're shooting for. So we really don't want black. And as you can see, I am very close to black. Oops. So I'm going to keep adding red. And since it's so dark, I'm going to go ahead and mainly add just the cad red. Until I get kind of a, a dark burgundy color. See how it's a nice dark burgundy color? So we're going to take this red-black mixture. We're going to load up that brush. Again, you can use your filbert if you'd like. And we're basically going to keep our shadows kind of on the on the, the left side of the canvas. Okay. And we'll keep our highlights on the right side. So as you can see, I am just following that curve and I'm going to bring it down into here. This is a good time if you have kind of painted over your edge here. This is a good time to get a nice crisp edge. Load up that fabulous little angular brush, lay them on there, and then just wee. Now I am going to, as you can see, I can just blend it on over. I really like that. I want this to be darker and this is where you're going to clean up all your edges. Okay? Clean up all those little edges. I'm going to grab a little more black because I'm feeling crazy that way. And then just keep getting more paint. If you want to add a little more just red to it to kind of bring it over into the middle of the, the hat like this to kind of blend it, do it. Do it. Just grab some. And see how I'm kind of bringing that over. Now I'm also going to use this dark on the bottom of the hat, on the bottom of the brim. I got it pretty dark there. But I want to clean up this edge right here. So I'm going to take this with that dark. I'm going to grab just a touch of black on the edge. See how that cleans that up? It's an edge without really an outline, you know? And we don't really necessarily want an outline. But we want a clean, crisp edge. And then you can just blend the rest. See, I'm blending this up this way. I'm going to grab a little red. Blend that up. Blend, blend, blend. All right, grab some of that dark again. We want to have a kind of a definite where it looks like it's folding. So take your dark color and you can add a little touch of black to it if you'd like. But take that dark color. And as you can see, I've got my brush loaded. There's some bright red up there, but that's okay. And I'm going to take my pointed end. And I'm going to go just above like right here. I'm going to start right there and then it's going to look like it folds. 
where the hat sort of folds, you know, as it goes over. I'm going to keep that dark color going. Get a nice clean edge. This is looking pretty good, really, over here. But this is the time you want to clean up anything that you're not happy with. I'm going to flip this baby over. I'm going to hold on to him. Actually, I'm going to lay him a little bit flat. I know this is probably not easy for you to see. But I just want to get a clean edge to where that was going to the star. And we're doing the same thing on the body. We're just taking that dark color. And we're sort of, we're outlining without outlining. And wah. And then blend it in. If it's still too stark a blend, just add some regular red. Come back in. Touch around with it. Take that red into the, into the dark color. Okay, I'm just taking that plain red. There we go. There we go. See, we are zipping right along. And take that dark color, give him a little outline there, blend him in. See how I'm just bringing that around? Now he's got a little edge here that I'm not crazy about. And my paint, your paint might start getting goppy, goopy. Goppy, goopy, whatever. Add a, just a touch of water. And then don't just go immediately to your canvas. Come over here and mix it with the paint color you're using. Go, okay, I've watered it down just a little, just to keep it smooth. So smooth. And I'm going to take this canvas and I want to clean up this edge right here. So I'm just going to take that dark color. You can rest your hand there. I usually rest a pinky. And then just wah. Wah, 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 wah. There you go. Now with the same angular brush, I'm going to take the cad red and white. And we're going to do some highlights on the body and the hat with that same angular brush. So I cleaned it out really well because I don't want any black in it at all. And I'm going to take just a dab of red. Cleaned out my brush. And I'm going to grab white. Oh, load that up pretty good there. And I'm going to put it over. See how I'm putting it over to the edge of the red? That way I can mix just a little red in there. I don't want a ton of red. I just want it off white. That's all I want to do. I still got a little extra water in my brush. That's probably a little more pink than I want it. So I'm going to clean out my brush. Dab the water out of it. That's how you dab the water out. That way it brings the water down from the ferrule because water gets trapped up in here and while you're painting, all of a sudden you've got drips coming out and it is just a mess. So I take it and I press, press against here. Just gently press. And you'll see that the water's coming out of it. So you take a little white, mix it with this. See, I'm going on the edge, so I'm picking up just barely any of that pink. But I want to load up my brush. And again, we want to back up on the brush. Back up. This is what causes little bitty jaggedy. Oh my gosh. Don't do that. I know you want to. I want to too. But we're going to be much happier with the finished project if we just back up just a little bit. We don't want it gloppy. We just want it nice and thin. This helps keep it nice. Our, our, it keeps our brush chiseled so we have a nice sharp point. Okay, now 
this is all we're doing. We're just doing these little white lines. They're very loose, they're very, but they help give it some movement. It feels like, see how this feels still kind of flat? Well, we're just gonna give us a little bit of movement here. Wah! See, that was it. Don't go slow. Just envision where that brush is gonna go. Where do you want this thing? Loosen up. Make sure you're nice and loose and relaxed. Be listening to some great music that makes you happy, whether it's sing-along or dancing or whatever. I do a lot of dancing when I paint. Um, I sing too, but nobody wants to hear that. Believe me. I just want one more right here. See, he got a little wiggly. I got nervous. I got nervous. Give that a second to dry. We're going to take a little bit of our dark burnt umber, our nice chocolatey brown. And if there's, we're just going to roll our small pointed or our medium round. Like I said, I have a medium round, which is a pointed tip. If you don't have a pointed tip, you're still okay. Just get the smallest brush you can because what we're going to do is we want to add just a few little details here on the star. So I'm taking that right down the outside. And you'll notice I roll this. Try and do this so you can see it. So I take my paint brush. See how I'm twisting it and rolling it? That way we keep a nice sharp tip but we're loaded with paint, as much as we can possibly get. So I'm just going to add a little here and a little there, a little shadow just to make it stick out, stand out a little bit better. And then I add a little touch to the inside. Again, just that round brush. If there's anything here you want to fix or add dark or whatever, now's the time. While you've got that brush out and it's so handy, I'm going to add a little dark here and there. All right, we're going to clean that brush and we're going to get just the white on that same little brush. And we're just going to add a little highlight on his nose, on his gloves. I like to add one on his thumb. It shows up a little better if you want to add a little white here to highlight the cane the shepherd's hook or whatever we're calling that little guy. I'm also going to add just a few little highlights on the star. So I'm going to go the opposite side of those shadows that we added. Let's see how I'm just, just little touches. And I'm going to go on his shoe, too. So since I went over on his shoe like this, I'm just going to add one right there. And right there. And then on the other shoe, whoop, just a big line. And at this point, if you want to touch up his beard, go for it. So I'm going to take my plain bristle brush in just white. And I'm going to add some real bright highlights. This is where you can add some detail of, you know. You can really get a feel for the fuzziness of the beard. 
Because, you know, they're fuzzy. Fuzzy wuzzies. All right. But I keep going round. You have to keep going round because this is a round, soft texture we're trying to provide. We've been doing the bag with the small flat. I'm going to go ahead and use Filbert. I'm going to come in and touch up things that I want to touch up, clean up, but I'm just using white here, just white. And I can blend that out a little bit. If you have too much, wipe off your brush, get a little bit wet, not too wet. You'd be surprised at how little water you actually use while you're painting. You think I'm going to use a lot more than I actually use? This is more dry brushing, or just a little bit of paint on our brush. Just soften it into the other colors. I'm going to come in here and get a little white here just to have a little contrast with that dark. I'm going to take a little bit of that chocolate brown. I'm doing it on the filbert. You don't have to. You can use a small or medium round. Um, I would not go flat with this because I don't think it'll flow as well. But I watered down my paint just a little bit. And again, I didn't just add water to the brush and start painting. I'm mixing it back in on the palette to see what is the texture. How thin is it? I don't want it drippy. I just want it nice and thin so it just flows. That's it. That's it. And I'm just going to have a little line here and maybe a little line right in here. A little thicker than I wanted, but that's okay. And a little line there. And then I want, along with these darker lines, I want just a couple little lines. Just to show that is where it ends. That is the opening of the bag. And now all these snowflakes. I just took the medium brush. And I dipped it into the white, straight in, just like that. And then just come along and some are big, some are little. You can use the end of your brush, this side, and make bigger snowflakes. I think it's very important that you put some on him in front of the bag. Makes it look more realistic. You know, because that is really what we're going for. We are super realistic on this one. <laughs> but that's it. Add all your little snowflakes. I'm going to add some big ones and I'm going to come back. Add some little ones. They're very random because, you know, that's how snowflakes are. I'm just going to let you know as you can... Doing it this way on the end of your brush, it's a lot of paint and that is going to take a while to dry. Now I got no problem with that. But I just want to make sure you understand that you're not going to paint this and then, you know, carry it in your car somewhere right away because those snowflakes are going to be wet for quite some time. I don't really go past this point. I just feel like then the snow would be hitting the ground. And why would you need to go past that? So that's it. That is it. We have just created a nice little gnome for the holidays. I think he's kind of cute. I think you should name him. And I hope you had a good time. Now don't forget to sign it. Because you know, you've worked hard on this. And you should sign it. So I'm going to sign mine. You sign yours. Everybody sign. I have a tendency to sign over here in the corner. That is completely your choice. So if you have any questions, 
you know, feel free to let me know. Shoot us a message. We're going to continue with uh, more videos in the future. All kinds of videos. We have some uh, sculpture coming up soon, which I think will be really cool. But yeah, follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Let us know what you think. Thanks so much. Have a good one. We'll paint again soon. I'll have all the details below, of course. So make sure and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and continue to follow us here on YouTube. We'll continue to make more tutorials in the near future. We hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy making them. Thanks.